way, way back there. Okay, so Ben is uh, up first. Um, ben is a wonderful UX code designer um, with um, a bit of coding experience, right? a jack of all and a master of some, which <laughs> I have had to really practice not saying what I should have said. Um, uh, he's worked um, in the industry for 10 years, uh, both uh, agency and in-house, and is currently uh, residing at Low Cost Travel Group. So if everyone would like to give a round of applause to Ben. Um, okay, uh, I work for Low Cost Holidays. Uh, we have a brand called Hotelling, which is a international hotel online, online hotel retailer. And uh, basically, this um, this website runs across 30 different countries, 15 different languages. And I'm going to talk to you about the payment page that I'm working on currently and all the research and all the quirks I found out about international payment pages. It was two hours long. I'm somehow going to try and do it in five minutes, so it's going to get a bit mental. <laughs> right, okay, so my sources of research, first of all, Hundreds of staff there. I interviewed um, 20 international staff on that occasion. I used it and tested it with them. I also read a bunch of clever articles by these people here. So the caveat about my uh, presentation is that I read it all on the internet, therefore it must be true. <laughs> okay, so this is our homepage. page. 15 innocuous questions, 14 of them mandatory, 14 barriers to your customer giving you lots of their hard earned cash. So let's get into each one, uh, each one of the questions that we're asking for people, okay? So, first of all, titles, right? Mr. Mrs. that sort of thing. Only one third of users in the UK use this as optional, right? Nor, nor they consider it outdated. If you don't add this, some people consider that sexist. The BA goes to the um, links of having rabbi, like how admiral, that sort of thing. There's a whole bunch of quotes in this question that could be a myriad of issues on an international basis. First name and last name. Okay, first name and last name. Fantastic, that works for loads of us, apart from Malaysia, where it's last name, first name. Now we're in Spain where you've got four, four parts to your name, so this convention may not work successfully for everyone. Also, names contain hyphens, uh, hyphens, hyphens, apostrophes, capitalization, so allowing characters into your, um, into your form is important, and capitals later on in your form as well. Email address, uh, again with characters, check out all these bad boys that can exist in the email address, who thought of that? So <coughs> one of the main problems of email addresses is that you can validate against this, and you can get people, uh, disallow people to continue on your page through a completely genuine email address because you thought, okay, you can't have code braces on your email address. Um, phone number, so you've already got their email address, so now you're asking for another piece of personal information. The more personal information you ask from people and contact details, the more freaked out people are going to get. So you have to explain why you're asking for the phone number. Um, and also, uh, if it's an expensive item, people are quite happy to actually give their phone number, it's kind of reassuring. Phone numbers can have plus signs in them, brackets in them, spaces, hyphens, all that sort of stuff, so it's not just numbers. And when it's international, you have code on the front, but then the question happens, do I need the zero in front of the rest of my number? So that can, come, you know, that can throw people. Address, I'm not going to go into this, we sell hotels online, we don't post hotels to people, so why on earth do you want to ask <laughs> So, um, we use it for validating forms, because not a lot of people do that. Zip or postal code. Okay, so this is typically three to eight numbers, all right? It can have space in it, it can have a hyphen in it. It's in Brazil, for example. Um, in the UK, we've gone with being alphanumeric, so three, us and three other countries are alphanumeric. Um, Ireland doesn't use it. Three other countries also don't have a postal code, so we can't make it mandatory for these people. Um, and it's called zip code in America. That's how it works. Country, how many countries are there? You can go to different sources and find there are different numbers of countries, and this number changes as well. Sudan and Montenegro became countries in the last seven years, so this list will change. Out of 250 countries that you do have, when you put it in a lovely drop down menu, it becomes a fucking nightmare for people to use. <laughs> so, um, but everyone does it. And Baymars have produced a fantastic tool which also populates, but it only translates to English currently. Card type, moving on to card now. Okay, lots of different card types out there. For example, there's a popular in France called the card C. In Russia, China, Germany, Visa and MasterCard only have 40% market share. So you have to provide people with all the relevant payment options to that country and back it up with PayPal and all that stuff. Card type, uh, sorry, card number, uh, the num amount of numbers that appear, 
uh, uh, for each, it changes for each card type. It could be 13, 16, 18, 19, there can be high distance, there can be spaces. You can validate card numbers instantly, which is quite a cool thing. Literally from the last number, you can tell whether it's correct or not. Um, and uh, users get kind of confused whether they need to have the spaces in there. And if you auto format it to have the spaces in there, sometimes they go back and try and delete it. So you've kind of got to watch out for the way that works. Name on card, not much on this one. You just have to suggest that it's the name as it appears on the card, and it should allow all the characters, such as hyphens and apostrophes, that are allowed in their normal name. Expiry date, not much to this one either, um, but it's suggested that you represent it in exactly the same way that it's seen on the card. And finally, security code. This is called different things depending on which card, which card you select. It could be a CVV, CV2, CVC, so you've got to be careful about what you call it. Uh, it's always numbers, um, and it's always three numbers apart from Amex when it's four numbers. <laughs> uh, so the summary is, you need to be really, really aware of all the international variations that you can ask for all the questions that you're asking people. Also, thinking about the questions that you present people with. Are they really, really important, like the address? Do you need it? Making them mandatory and optional is also really, really critical, because you can force people into a bottleneck that they can't get out of. And... Um, Yes, this validation, don't cut people off with uh, things which are absolutely genuine to having their email address and their names. So thank you very much. If you want to find out more.